little basketball talk off the off the jump here as it was kind of pretty much already known, but now it's official. Mm. Arkansas has a date and a throwdown, apparently, because as you see here on your screen, it's the turkey throwdown between Illinois and Arkansas, 3 p.m. on Thursday, which is Thanksgiving, November 28th, at the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. Wow. What a name and what a graphic. Are, are we going to embrace turkey throwdown or no. are we going to protest stinker that of a name, dude. That's I, awful. A stinker. yeah I, I don't know i don't know how i feel about that one um but it's not going to take away from my excitement for the game I mean, it's really cool and and yeah we've we've known this is going to be a thing we've been kind of waiting on all the official details it's a it's a big deal and i tweeted this earlier along with the story but it's just kind of the latest illustration i think of just the aura of john calipari man he, he is his own brand uh, and this is probably not something that Arkansas basketball would have gotten if, if Calipari wasn't here. Uh, there's basketball played on Thanksgiving every year. It's it's feast week, right? Everybody's tuned into those uh, tournaments, whether it's the Maui or the Battle for Atlantis or whatever. Um, but for a, a one-off game in a neutral site like this, uh, to be following Lions Bears on CBS, this is the first time on Thanksgiving Day that CBS has ever televised a, a college basketball game and so it's going to be a lot of eyes it's a marquee deal this wouldn't have happened if john calipari wasn't in arkansas it wouldn't happen for arkansas anyway yeah it's pretty awesome and you know the first thing i thought about whenever i first heard about this game was you remember these two teams were kind of supposed to play in kansas city just a couple of years ago uh, obviously arkansas did their part of the deal by beating kansas state but illinois got upset by cincinnati and so we didn't get to see this matchup uh, the good folks of Kansas City were like, we got to write this wrong. We got to schedule. We got to cut out the middle, man. No, no play in situation. These guys are just playing just a one game on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, but yeah, you guys said it there. I mean, it's going to be fun. Uh, turkey Day is also going to be just a I mean, turkey's Turkey Day is a fun day. Uh, and now the turkey throwdown being there. So the excitement's going to be there. I mean, early in the season, you know, I know everybody, you know, doesn't like to move or do two seasons at the same time. And I know there'll be a big football game that week, but. Man, that's that's got my attention, and I'm I'm uh, infinitely more excited for the turkey throwdown than I am for that football game that week. To be honest with you, you know, you mentioned that uh, that Hall of Fame Classic a couple years ago, uh, and I remember traveling up there to cover that. And the whole thing, the entire time we were talking about Arkansas's non-conference schedule that year, it was like, well, <clears throat> you know, they'll get Illinois, and that'll kind of be the marquee game, and then you know, like whatever, they'll play Oklahoma at the BOK Center, and it'll be decent or whatever. Everything to make that schedule quality hinged on them playing Illinois. And you're right. Like it just didn't work out. And there were some dog fights there. The, the Kansas state game and the Cincinnati game. I mean, it was awesome basketball, uh, but neither one of those teams wound up making the tournament. And so it, it really didn't do anything to move the needle for Arkansas. But I remember sitting there on press row. And a lot of times at these events, they'll have designated seats for coaches too, for like the next games they'll sit and they'll scout the opponent. They'll be playing the next night or whatever. Uh, and I remember the coaching staff for Arkansas, BM is Key Smart and uh, <clears throat> uh, Gus Arginal and all those guys. And they're sitting there and it's very much like a this shouldn't be happening deal. While since because Cincinnati was pounding Illinois and Illinois was good. They had the uh, Kofi Cockburn kid. They had uh, the point guard. His name escapes me, but he he transferred to St. John's, but he was a big deal at the time. It was a freshman, Coleman Hawkins. Like they had a lot of dudes on Miller. that team. Is that and, a name? Uh, maybe. They had some oh, Miller uh, kid. Car Carbello. Andre Carbello is the ah, guy. Yes, Carbello was college. awesome, yeah. But yeah, it was just uh, it was a wild deal, and and it was like the game that never that was supposed to happen that never did. That's going to happen now, which is cool. But there's so many neat storylines that come with it. I mean, obviously me and John were in Des Moines uh, for that Arkansas, Illinois matchup a couple years ago, you know, where the hogs knocked them out of the NCAA tournament. That was pretty cool. Completely. Uh, you, forgot got, about them. <laughs> you got Calipari's long-term buddy and assistant Orlando Antigua is there mm -hmm. now at Illinois. Uh, you've got big Z versus little Z big bro versus little bro playing against each other now. So it's, it's just really cool, man. There's a, a lot of storylines. It, it's an exciting matchup. And well, two good basketball teams. Yeah, and I think I, I talked about this too before with you, Curtis. Like, you know, we all together were at all the NCAA tournament games that Arkansas played in under Muss. And for some reason, that Illinois game, 
is the one I remember the least about. Like, I don't remember anything about it. I don't know why. I know Arkansas won. I know they won. I mean, I think it was like by 15, something like that. But there's just nothing that stood out about that. I remember more about the Colgate game than what I do this game. So, uh, yeah, so it'll be nice to actually see that type of matchup and uh, to get there in, in Kansas City. But uh, going back to the little graphic thing, and I got the turtle. So what what is that thing <laughs> called again with the cones? What is that? Uh, what I is want to call it a cornucopia, but I don't think that's Corn- it. I think that is it. Cornucopia? Is it? Is it? We need the uh-huh. chat. Yeah. I learned this like last year. Yeah, I think I made like I had to make one when I was in elementary school, and I still have no idea what the point of it is. But I think anyway. it's an activity, is what it is. Mm. Well, I mean, they feel like they missed an opportunity to put an actual turkey in the graphic for the turkey throwdown. That's a copyright uh, issue. Turkeys uh, are uh, turkeys are owned by wrong, <laughs> different company. No. They can't do well, that. Okay, well then per- put a turducken on there or something. I don't. The know. The only thing I'll say about this, what stood out to me the most, just about the the scene or whatever like the crowds were really good then and it was it was post covid it was like mm-hmm. that year right after that so it was a little bit um whatever like watered down attendance or limited or whatever uh but when you left those games Kansas City was closed dude like nothing was open and it's right across the street from the KC live thing everything was shut down like there was nowhere to go to eat or hang out or whatever uh I'm just going to assume that was a COVID deal because I really hope, especially for a three o'clock game, like we could check out that game, do what we got to do, a little post game action, maybe somewhere down there uh, and then just go hang out and, and watch some football and, and enjoy the place. Even if it's Thanksgiving, like yeah, you got to have some bars open down there. I mean, come on. That's, People are going to travel. That was going to be my thing is like, yeah, it's, it's Thanksgiving. But no, I remember that too, Curtis, because like Casey live, I think we found one place that was open until kind of late like right. and everything else was just closed and i remember asking the guys like is all these things closed they're like uh yeah because of you know uh, covid and then the holiday and i'm like well it's monday before thanksgiving <laughs> like i don't know thanksgiving's not a full week it's a, it's a majority of the week but it's not a full week holiday but still uh yeah that was uh that, and i remember too when arkansas played cincinnati it was a pretty really, really good game yeah and i think correct from wrong uh, curtis wasn't Adis tony the mvp of that it event? Was. He yeah, was like, because, like 18 and 12 in both games or something like that. And he held Jeremiah Davenport scoreless. Man. And that was after Davenport went for like 27 on Illinois the night before. And so it was this big deal in the scouting report. Like, who are they going to put on Jeremiah Davenport? Imagine that, you know, a couple yeah. of years ago that he was the focal point of a really important game for Arkansas. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. he was not the focal point of anything for an entire year while at Arkansas. I'll oh. tell you what I remember about those games. I remember Aldis Tony when we realized like, oh man, he's awesome. He's like a four offensively. And then defensively, he's like a two through four, like he could guard anyone. Uh, but I also remember Chris likes that was back when they used him as the free throw guy down the stretch. And he, he probably hit like 12 free throws in the final two minutes. Oh, yeah, man. State the game before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But okay. Y'all talk to me about this for a second. Cause geographically y'all would know better than I would. Arkansas plays Missouri on Saturday this year, right? Yes, yes, sir. Kansas City, Columbia. Are they? How far away are they? Where? Where? How? How far is it? Like two, two and a half hours, probably. So hypothetically, you think there will be some Hog fans that go to Kansas City, spend Thanksgiving that day, and then you know, kill time, hang out in KC Friday, and then head over to Columbia for the game on Saturday. You think there? I, I mean, seems oh like yeah, that would be a thing people I think do, that's right? A- I think that's an awesome little trip to put together. It, what would be really cool is if they were actually following through with the Mizzou game the Friday after Thanksgiving in Arrowhead. Yes. Like that would have been a sick yeah. trip. Um, but I'm going to see if I can talk you guys into uh, into us going on a little roadie for that. Skip your Thanksgiving plans. <laughs> Join me. Um, we'll go to we'll go to Columbia, Missouri. Who you guys you think I really love Mizzou, and uh, I'll I'll show you the ropes. Curtis will be in his black and gold. He'll be ready to roll, man. But uh, I also look. I don't want to make this about us, but I'm going to make this about us for a second. I want I want everyone at home to really appreciate the fact that when these things happen, we all start mentally prepping in our hands or in our minds of like, what are we going to tell our spouses or significant others? Because uh, I mean, we just have to get yelled at over the holidays sometimes, you know. Christmas, mm-hmm. you can usually avoid because there's usually not events happening over the Christmas holidays, True. Uh, at least not the actual days. But uh, yeah, I'm already like kind of like going to start planting the seeds with Hillary of like, hey, by the way, I'm just kind of out on Thanksgiving this year. Just yep. <laughs> that whole weekend, like you're going to have to go. You could you go to Arkadelphia. I'm going to go to Kansas City. We'll call it a day. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I don't think I'll have any chance of talking my way out of it. That's like my if my if there was a holiday that my family has to have, it, it's Thanksgiving. Like they would rather me skip Christmas than Thanksgiving. So well, we'll see. last last year, uh, I wasn't even I wasn't even going to try to talk my wife into the whole battle for Atlantis thing in the Bahamas um, until and this was our we were already in November and she came to me and she was like, hey, uh, you know. This, work deal and everything because she travels all over for work but then they have some big events and in, in special places you know at, at thanksgiving christmas time whatever she's like yeah you know in december i um, got this opportunity to go to hawaii for a week for work you know how would you feel about that and that was my that's all i needed and i was like oh yeah that's cool because i've been meaning to tell you i'm going to the bahamas for thanksgiving and uh and it just so happened to work out me and scotty had a blast down there uh but it, the weirdest thing about that is like it was it was not a thanksgiving feel at all uh obviously there was a lot of basketball but it was just you know different kind of cuisine and everything like that we ate at uh we ate at starbucks that was our thanksgiving dinner <laughs> scotty and i and uh and then we watched arkansas choke against memphis and it kind of ruined the vibes but Curtis, sure that it was great. if you and scotty hadn't gone on that trip scotty would probably be on the stream true or false ah uh, uh, true that that trip was a rough <laughs> one <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> uh also isaiah campbell was in the bahamas with y'all for some reason right yeah he was we actually uh we stumbled into him and hunter urichek in the casino down there in, in atlanta so Just the fellas man Plans what, like uh, what table were they at can you yeah. can you can you say mm, that well they were let's see they were by the poker tables but they weren't playing when ah, we went by there observing yeah. you know yeah, they were kind of standing right there talking to each other so. dude what if they were like what, what if they were in in it's in, involved in something you know maybe they were like the signals you know they were given to the other people across you know Could've you're been. checking campbell just running a two-man game on the yep. uh, on the blackjack and the, the i know i know scotty and i were really uh searching high and low in that resort to see if we could find your check after that arkansas missouri debacle that football game at the end of the year <laughs> Uh, but it turns out he had already went back home. So, mm. well, mm. here's the thing: if I if uh, do go to Missouri or whatever for the game, I'm sure I'll be really welcome there, and I'm going to be really obnoxious and let sure everyone knows I'm there and see what happens. But that's also the thing too: is like it'd be a great combo trip, and I think a lot of fans would if that Missouri game had some, like if it was worth if the team at that time is worth seeing. Like if they're four and seven again, I don't think many people are going to make nah. Not going to do that, but yeah. if, it, Maybe it, be, if they're four and seven in football, that Turkey Day basketball game is going to be a an event. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I just wish it was like on Friday. Now that uh, now I look at it, but like Blake, he, this is a great point by Blake here in the chat. He says all they had to do was add the word day, and it would sound so much better. Turkey Day throwdown. I hundred percent agree with that. Actually, yeah. Turkey That's Day is a fun thing to say. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Curtis, what's your, I know you played in or coached in some Turkey Day events in your time because every like high school, college, whatever, they all name something stupid. Even if it's like November seventh, they'll be like, "Oh, it's the Turkey Trot" or something like that. <laughs> what's your? Do you have a? Do you have a uh, any any Turkey Day basketball memories? Mm, I mean, my my best Turkey Day memories, honestly, are are from covering the Razorbacks. I mean, being in the Bahamas for that. Now, the year before is when Arkansas was in Maui, and uh, I had the flu and COVID combo Ooh. at the same time, and I was not even in Maui, so I was having to cover that crap from home, and I did not feel good at all. Uh, but thinking back to the coaching days, um, I don't know that we ever really played on Thanksgiving because they were really big on if school's not in session, you can't play. Because then we have to, because then the school's got to front the bill for the dorms and they got to pay for uh, the kids for their meal plan and everything like that. And they were cheap. So they didn't really want to do that. Um, now we would be able to bring them back on campus, you know, like Thanksgiving night or the day after and everybody's throwing up because they're fat and full. Um, <laughs> but we played, we played in some of those in high school. I can't remember the names of any of them, but I, we, we hopped on a bus and traveled across the state and did some of that before. And I don't know, man, it's just a, it's a good time. We never, uh, we never, it, like you said, it's never actually on Thanksgiving because in high school you really just can't do that. But I remember we mm -hmm. we hosted a thing called the Turkey Shootout at Pineville Junior High. I love that. I was in seventh grade, mm -hmm. and so the eighth grade team was really like the main team. But uh, and there was there was there's about fifty something seconds left. We were playing Tioga, our big rivals, and I got to get in because it was just fifty something seconds left. And uh, I touched the ball one time, dribbled it right off my foot, turnover, layup the other way. 
And uh, that was it. That was Dang. my turkey. That was our my, tur- my turkey shootout memory, man. I in the moment, dude. I seriously like it was one of the worst moments of my life. But looking back, I'm like, ah, eh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, I don't have any uh, cool stuff like that, other than the fact that I may get canceled because when I was in elementary school, I did dress up as a uh, Native American and uh, with the feathers on my head and everything mm-hmm. like that to blackface. Uh, yeah, yeah, meet the pilgrims. But hey, I actually have Native American in me, so you know it's cool. It's fine, you know. So, but. That's, yeah, that's, all, that's, that's why your family likes Thanksgiving so much, huh? Eh? That's right. That's, that's right. why you're so tan. Yeah. So yeah. for all of you people that's who right. are yeah. John of hitting it's not the bed, makeup. It's, you know? it's uh, yeah. heritage is what it is. That's exactly. true. True. And if you and if you have anything to say about it, that means you're pretty much racist and about my <laughs> my skin tone. So don't say anything like that. But. Don't racially profile John. <laughs> yes, please, please. It's 2024, everybody. Come on. Yeah, let's, come let's on. Get there. Um, so, uh, oh, I'll shout out fish, man. One of the craziest chatters we'll ever have, but I love fish, man. Dude. Appreciate, uh, appreciate the, the donation, but mm-hmm. talking about Arkansas playing Missouri, if they're four and seven, will Pittman still be on the sideline? They're four and seven now. It, it depends on what the four wins, like if he had like one of those that were actually pretty good, maybe, but man, I don't know. I don't know. You, you know, think it'd be a win one for the Gipper situation. Like, oh, we're going to Missouri. We're four and seven. We just, cause. Who do they play? They play Louisiana Tech before Missouri, right? Right. I think so. so I guess yeah. it would be three and seven going into that game. Yeah. I don't uh, like, I don't know. I just really don't see a way. I think at that point it's probably because also, too, you think the two wins that they had were in the first three games, you'd assume against UAPB and UAB. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're talking about a stretch of like eight games where you had one win. Multiple bye weeks in those situations too. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's gonna that's gonna fly or that's gonna happen. But either way, um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, but going back to the uh, the the Razorback basketball, and we know that there's other games that have been scheduled. Like this is for sure going yeah. to be the greatest non conference schedule of all time that Razorbacks ever had. Right? Like it's not even close. Uh, Until it's gonna be when they're in the Champions Classic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. I like that it's spread out because. Uh, I, I've, I've always been a big feast week guy, so I tune in and watch Maui and battle for Atlantis, all those. It's just cool, man. Those tournament style things early in the year. Um, but I like that it's spread out for Arkansas instead of having three games in three days that are pretty good. And then the rest of your schedule sucks. Uh, this is spread out and that's probably, that game is probably going to be the beginning of a, of a nice little run there. Uh, because I think December, what is it? The third, then they travel to Miami. Um, and they get that SEC ACC thing, a, a true road game. That's pretty awesome. Then the weekend after that, or the week after that, it's uh, Madison Square Garden for Michigan. Uh, and you got some stuff in between there, but you got those games. I, I think they're going to get one more. They just got to get it across the finish line, uh, which will be another neutral site type game against a, a power conference opponent, a regional matchup uh, that would be really, really good. I think would rival any of these other games that they got going on here. And it would almost be like every week starting on Thanksgiving and going through kind of that Christmas break, like you'd have a banger of a game. Uh, and, and so I think that would be awesome. I don't know if any of them are going to be at Bud Walton Arena, uh, but still, you know, if they're going to be doing the neutral sites and things, um, I think it's cool that you're playing in Kansas City. It It's drivable. Um, maybe they can get across the finish line with something here in Dallas. It's drivable. It's easy to get to. So uh, if you're not going to be in Bud at least play somewhere regional and close where fans can go to and, and make a trip out of it. 